This photo was taken around 2003, and it's 160 by 120 pixels and just 2.6K. This is it upscaled in Photoshop. And now in Gigapixel AI. Pretty incredible. It was taken on a Sony T68i, a phone so old even its stock photo is low res. In fact, hang on. Wait, is that better or worse? Well, this raises the question of the limitations of the software. Before we go there though, let's have a look at a few more upscales so you can get a feel for what to expect in most cases. Here's a picture of some rodents, with the original resolution on screen. This is it upscaled on a standard upscaler, and now with Gigapixel AI. Incidentally, I'm using paint for a lot of the standard upscales, as it's almost indistinguishable from Photoshop. Here they are side by side. It seems to have added a little bit of blue in the eye, but overall it's clearly far better. Here's a picture of a wedding in 2014, first with a regular upscaler, and now with Gigapixel. And now back and forth so you can see the difference. It's much better, but not perfect. You can see the brooch in the middle looks slightly artificial. Here it is zoomed in. But then again, given what it was working with, there really wasn't much information to begin with. Here's a photo of me in Brisbane. In this case I've taken the original high resolution image, scaled it down sixfold in paint, exported it, then re-upscaled in Gigapixel AI. This way we can see how close to the original it becomes. This is the paint re-upscale, and this is the Gigapixel AI. Here they are side by side. And now on the left is the original high resolution image, and on the right is the upscale from the image one-sixth of the size. The results are interesting. It feels smoother and cleaner. The koala's face definitely looks clearer. However, if you stare at it, it also has an ever so slightly artificial feel. But the colours on the shirt are much darker, and there's more contrast between the white specks and the black. The background isn't quite as good, and there appears more contrast and clarity on the original. Let's take a look zoomed in. Here's the koala's face again. It's clearly cleaner and tidier, and a lot of the noise has been removed. But, as I said, it does have that slightly artificial feel. And now my face. Again it's smoother and a lot of the noise has been removed, but the ear on the right has also been lost, as well as one of the crow's feet from the right eye. The background is definitely better in the original, with more detail and better lighting effects on the left. But this is hardly surprising. If we look again at the file I gave Gigapixel to work with, we can see quite how blurry it was. Again on the left now is the paint re-up scale of the one sixth sized image, and on the right, the Gigapixel. All in all, a great success, I would say, and nearly as good as the original again. Next, let's look at some artwork. This was generated in Midjourney, and the resolution's on screen. Here it is upscaled. Everything has become crisper, and to my eye, better. Zooming in a bit, it's even clearer. All the lines have been redrawn, and I don't see any real downsides. As you get very close, there are a few distortions, but the nature of a painting is that these can be thought of as what the paint genuinely looks like. For this reason I feel Gigapixel is extremely well suited to upscaling art, especially AI generated art. Standard upscalers expand the image, then take an average of the surrounding pixels to fill in the blanks. This causes blurring. AI upscalers essentially interpolate what should be there, and then redraw it to make it crisp. You can see the effect clearly in this image of Homer. As you can see, this works particularly well when there are clear, sharp edges, so it's particularly good at artwork and cartoons. It's also effective when our minds aren't certain what should be there. For example, while these leaves and grass look slightly artificial when zoomed in, we don't really know what they should look like, so it's easy for us to accept AI's approximation and just believe what we see. It's certainly better than a blurry photo. But when it comes to details that we're used to interpolating ourselves, such as blurry text, it's far less reliable. The image of the Sony Ericsson is clearly much sharper, but the letters are jarring because we know they're wrong. Essentially, blurry letters are fine because our own brains interpolate them, but crisp, detailed nonsense is not. 
This effect also occurs in faces, as evolutionarily, we're particularly good at recognising them. Here is the image from earlier, without any facial correction. Fortunately, Gigapixel AI does have a facial correction feature, where it recognises them and redraws them as they should be. The image on the right has had this applied. This leads to the interesting philosophical question of whether you're still looking at the same image. If all the pixels have been drawn in, is it still the same face? Well, I can tell you that this is very recognisable as my high school friend, but that's probably also because our own brains interpolate and make up information too, especially when we're referencing memory. So, to conclude the philosophical aside, everything we see is interpretation and it probably doesn't matter. So, let's try that facial recognition on another photo. Here we are again with the camera phone photo from 2003. Let's tick facial recovery and apply the upscale. In fact, let's let Gigapixel AI do the big reveal. It doesn't always work, there are limitations. You can clearly see how it's recognised and redrawn these faces, but since it had virtually nothing to work with, the result was horrific. Here's what it looks like turned off and on. So why didn't it work? Well, the first image was the same size, but the face was about 10 times the size. Essentially, each face in the image on the right has about 20 pixels of width to work with, and so it's just guessing. It's amazing it's recognised any faces to begin with. Let's have another look at a failure. Here the face has been partially obscured behind a menu, and the upscale is not as impressive. Again we have issues with the hieroglyphic text, and since the face was hidden, it wasn't as easy to detect. The image on the left here has the facial correction turned on. It's done a very good job with the hair, but not the eyes, and the top of the menu has confused it. Still, the effect on the hair is very impressive. From what i found with very low resolution images, Gigapixel does an extremely good job when the subject is facing the camera and not obscured. But if they're not, then it can go tits up. Here many of the subjects on the right look a little weird, not to mention yours truly sat in the back with the bow tie. Yeah, I took six year old birthday parties very seriously. I'm still incredibly impressed with the results however, because you have to remember where we're starting from and what other upscalers can do. Speaking of other upscalers, what are the alternatives? Well, very briefly, this is the result from a free online AI upscaler. Definitely better than standard, but miles worse than Gigapixel, and being online it's slower to use. This is the result from Remini AI, a paid subscription online upscaler. Again, better than the free one, but I would say it's clearly worse than Gigapixel. For the record, I've not fully compared Gigapixel to other paid upscalers, but from what I can see it seems to do very well. I did see one older review of it where it was introducing artefacts and errors into the photos, but I've not experienced that myself. This tech is moving very quickly, so I expect whatever was causing that has been fixed. So how is it to use? Well, very straightforward. You drag an image in and then you can select automatic or manual adjustments. The first section describes how it's going to treat the image, for example is it a photo or artwork? If it's a photo, is it standard, high res, low res or very compressed? Or is it an architectural one with lots of straight lines? There are also options for denoising, removing blur and fixing compression. You can go with auto settings or modify them yourself then you can drag a line back and forth across it to see the changes. The best settings depend on the image and what you're after. This is a mid-journey image of a nun. I've opened four windows so you can see the different effects. The top left is standard with auto settings applied, the top right is art and CG with auto settings, bottom left is standard with all settings turned down, and the bottom right is very compressed with auto settings. Of the four, my favourite is probably the bottom left, but let's zoom in to get a better view. 
Up close, you can see how the art and CG behaves differently. It tends to overemphasize lines in black, as if they're part of a cartoon. This is very clear in the wrinkles. You can also see the standard view with Remove Blur turned up is sort of doing the same, but to a lesser degree. It's also sharpened the edge of the face here. My favourite is the bottom left, as it feels more natural. Naturally, the bottom right is not great, as it's not a very compressed source image. But you can see how this mode behaves. It tends to smooth out blemishes because it assumes small deviations are negative artefacts and not an intended part of the image. This is evident in what it's done to the cheek, effectively removing any gradient and just giving it two distinct sections. Incidentally, face recovery is turned off for all these. I'll turn it on for the top left so you can see the difference. Interestingly, I think it's improved the area under the eye, but overall it's made things worse. I think the trick with facial recovery is that you only need to use it if you're genuinely recovering a face, not just whenever a face is involved. In this case, the face is perfectly clear and doesn't need rescuing, so facial recovery just alters it, not necessarily for the best. If I zoom right into the eye now and click on the image, you can see what it looked like before the upscale was applied. Finally, let's take a look at the woolen cloak she's wearing. This is one of the reasons I chose this image to look at, because the various modes treat this fabric very differently. When a large amount of sharpening has been applied, as in all images apart from the bottom left, the cloak becomes very bobbly. This is not to my liking. I feel the generic upscale with no sharpening is the best. Let's take a look at a less photorealistic image, again from Midjourney. If we zoom in, we can see the difference again. The art and CG is more aggressive with the lines, and the standard has a bit more of a haze to it. Both are good in this case. To my eye, I like the top left the most, definitely better than the bottom left this time, as the blur removal works well for artwork like this. Bottom right is the very compressed image, which is obviously no good, but if I change it over to HQ this time, it actually gives quite a nice result. Possibly better than the top left, it just depends on your taste. Going over to the cherry blossom tree, I think I prefer the top left again, but perhaps the building to the right looks better in HQ. Once again, I can hold down any image to see the original. If you wanted to upscale a large number of images, you can drag as many as you like in and then do them in bulk. You can set each one's settings manually, or you can leave them all on auto. Upscaling 300 images by 4x took about 7 to 8 minutes. Using face recovery takes quite a bit longer. Beyond 6x upscaling, it ceases to use AI and just goes the rest of the way with a standard upscaler. Yes, you can try to save it and then run it again on itself, but this doesn't produce better results. Incidentally, there's also a lines feature designed for architecture and buildings, but I've never had cause to use it. So that's my review of Gigapixel AI. Overall, I love it. It makes upscaling images so much simpler and more reliable. It costs $99.99, and that provides a permanent license and one year of updates. Annoyingly, the company does also have Denoise AI and Sharpen AI, which are specifically designed for each step, but they need to be bought separately. I feel they might be useful if your entire job revolves around upscaling photography commercially, but otherwise, Gigapixel by itself is amply sufficient. Buying them all together costs 200 bucks, but if you get Gigapixel separately first and buy the others later, you can still get a discount and only pay an extra 123. Effectively, it only works out $23 more expensive than buying them all at the same time. The final thought I'll leave you with is that it's interesting the software is not yet better at text. I wonder if in the future it will be able to predict what the text is, and then recreate it as it should look. For example, in this image, it may be able to determine it's looking at a fitness centre, albeit one with an escalator in front of it, and then guess what the text in the windows should say. Just a thought.